Hey guys, so VESC has become quite the buzzword recently in the One Wheel community for various reasons, and I see more and more interest in it, but also a lot of confusion and misleading statements. So in this video, I will try to clear up a few things and let you decide whether VESC is really something for you. So you've heard about VESC or have seen someone at a group ride and now you want one too. But is it really a good choice for you and how would you go about it? I want to start off with saying that VESC really is not for everyone. Taking the VESC route is not an upgrade like any of the others. You basically leave the Future Motion ecosystem because you get rid of the Future Motion controller, essentially the brain of the one wheel, and you replace it with a VESC controller. And that is just the start. It's definitely not plug and play. If you like to just ride and not worry about how it all works, then this may really not be for you. So for example, does the idea of thinking about voltage instead of just looking at battery percentage seem like too much of a hassle? That's just one of the many things that you will have to get used to when riding a VESC one wheel. Also, it's not easy to build. And ask yourself, are you good at DIY stuff or do you have somebody who does it for you? And I am also not good at DIY, but I'm really good at following instructions. So it worked out for me, but it really is quite an involved project. And I've seen some people that are really good at DIY and they just whip it out in no time and have no issue with it. But I always struggled with the stupidest little things. And then another example is, will you be okay without lights? Yes, of course, you've seen a few people post their one wheels with lights, but they're either being super naive about how they did it and are risking their safety, or they are a nine out of 10 on the DIY scale and they really know their stuff. Also, even things like buying a charger is far from straightforward. Yeah, it's cheap, but it requires some basic understanding of electricity. Also, do you have good troubleshooting skills? because you will need those or at least really good communication skills to figure out some of the issues that you might encounter. Now, do you need soldering skills? I know quite a few people that don't have soldering skills and are riding vests, but that is because they're working with somebody who does it for them. And I really don't know of many or any successful vest projects that did not require at least some soldering. So there are basically three options for how to get yourself a VESC board. Number one and the easiest one is you buy yourself a float wheel. It's a pre-made board with awesome specs and all you have to do is you have to assemble the wheel into the main frame which is basically IKEA level stuff that anybody can do. However, you still will need to learn how to configure and tune your VESC, which is not as easy as with future motion boards, and it is pretty easy to make your board completely unrideable. So there are no guardrails whatsoever for configuring those boards. Of course, things are getting better, and there are a few third-party apps that help you a little bit with that. But all in all, expect a learning curve to figure out how to tune these boards. I've seen quite a few people that started off with perfectly rideable boards and then they configured themselves into a corner. So that is something you still have to deal with even with a pre-made float wheel. Second option is you have someone else build it for you. Now, the thing is that there are not many one wheel service shops that offer this and even fewer of them know what they're doing. But a lot of them are motivated, they're smart guys, and they will figure it out. Just understand that they're trying to learn as they build yours. And so be patient with them and don't expect a perfectly working board that has zero issues. Right? You will have to take some responsibility for it yourself because no matter how well they build it for you, you can still easily screw it up. So you still, no matter which option you take, you need to learn how to configure these boards. But just to be clear, whatever misconfiguration you end up with, it is pretty much always fixable. So 
so don't worry about breaking your board that way. And then obviously the last option is you build it all yourself. So if you want to learn more or you want to start planning your build, there are quite a few resources out there for you to explore. The number one is PEV.dev. It's the best and most comprehensive resource that we have. This website is the closest thing that we got to a wiki. It's got a great search feature. You can post comments and amend posts, and anyone can and should contribute. If you can't find the info that you needed or wanted, then please consider adding it yourself. We need everyone's help with this. Now, pv.dev is great for finding information, but it's not really great for asking questions because if you just post a new question, not that many people see it or look at it. If you want a dialogue, then you have the Vescify Discord. I would post an invite for it in the description, but they do expire, so just ask me in the comments or uh, ask someone else. The Vescify Discord also has a lot of the 3D files that you may need, and it is also searchable, of course, so there's a lot of information in there. Also some wiring diagrams and so on, so please go and check it out. Then there's also the fun wheel and float wheel discords that you should absolutely join if you're even remotely serious about going the DIY VESC route. And then the last and worst option is Facebook. In my opinion, if you're serious about DIYing your board, you really shouldn't be asking the questions there. But Facebook is very useful if you want to reach experienced riders, not so much the builders. But as more and more people come on board, Facebook is also getting more and more useful. So there are plenty of channels out there to get your information. There's plenty of people that are knowledgeable that will answer your questions. So please do some research before you ask questions. We're getting the same questions over and over again. So at least put in some time and read through the main posts in the FAQ sections of PEV.dev. Watch some videos on YouTube before you start asking questions because chances are somebody else has already asked a question and even Facebook and all the discords have a search feature. So your question is usually not new. If you just scroll up two weeks or a week, you will find the answer. So I'm going to end it right here. I'm probably going to make a separate video helping you decide how to pick the ingredients and how to go about that DIY build. But I hate long videos. I'm not going to put that in here.